Okay, West Coast Artists is a crew, a graffiti crew, um, started in 1985. Started in, in the Hollywood area. It was like 10 or 12 plus, and then from pretty much from that point forward, it just continued to grow. Um, in 85, what was going on in the graffiti world was the Pan Pacific Auditorium was basically like the first legal place for us to paint. And it brought in people from all over the city. In Los Angeles, that we trailblazed. Um, prior to that, the only crew, there were a lot of there weren't a lot of crews. There was a handful of crews in Los Angeles, but most of them were devoted to their neighborhood, or they sprung up from their neighborhood, their high school. You know, because when you're 14 or 15, that's all you really know is the kids in your neighborhood or the kids you go to school with. In '85. When we started handpicking the best people that we could find from all over the city, um, we picked up people, like I say, from the valley. We picked up people from Venice. We picked up people from downtown. We picked up people from the South Bay. Um, thus, making our crew more of an all-city, um, racially and ethnically and monetarily diverse crew. We were the first ones to have, like, not only, you know, Crips and Blood, but Cholos in the crew, as well as, you know, white boys and surfers, and it just, the whole gambit of people. Um, and that was something that wasn't, that hadn't been done yet in LA. East Coast, 100% influenced. I went to New York in 82 and saw the bright, vibrant colors, the movement, the, the, the craziness of the graffiti in New York and that heavily influenced me and so I definitely went that direction. At that point in time, for my generation, there was a book out called Subway Art, which was pretty much the Bible. There was no internet, there was no graffiti on TV, there were no magazines, there were no books. The only way you could see graffiti was to A, go visit the place where it was done, B, have that book, or C, have a friend in New York who would actually take pictures, go get them developed, put them in an envelope and mail them to you. Those are the only ways to see graffiti. So, wanting to do something different than what I had seen previously, the whole gang thing, which is one of the things that thrilled me about graffiti art, was because I saw my friends getting arrested, I saw my friends going to jail, I saw my friends overdosing. I did not want to go down that road with the gangs. So I wanted to do something a little different. And that's what caught my attention with graffiti in the first place. So I gravitated toward, more towards the New York style of things. And because it, it was kind of like that dividing between gangs and, and something different for me. Pretty, pretty much from the emergence of the early beginnings of graffiti, um, we're all, all of us were coming from gang mentality, because that's all we'd grown up with. Um, so we kind of incorporated that attitude, that neighborhood attitude, in early on. And so, of course, there's going to be rivalries. Then it came to, um, we finally battled in 86 at Belmont Tunnel. It just took months to actually make that happen, because neither one of us trusted each other. We all painted. And we painted all day into the night. Pretty major turning point in, in, especially for us, for West Coast artists, but I think in graffiti as a whole, because prior to that, there was a negative attitude, like us against you. After that, we all became friends and it became more of a unification. And the whole vibe of graffiti, at least for our generation, changed into, hey, let's be friends and promote a common goal. My name is, is Mike, more commonly referred to as Pyro. Um, born and raised in Los Angeles, Hollywood, the exact, from a crew called West Coast Artists.